This is a short video on what it means for a sequence and a metric space to be Cauchy. So rather than looking at developing intuition in the metric space and trying to generalize that in a topological space, we're going to talk about a concept where we always are going to have a distance at our disposal to talk about it. So let's say XD is a metric space. And let's say that XN is some sequence um, you know, from X, and all I mean from that is that each of these points, Xn, are just elements of your set. And so uh, what do we want to do? We want to talk about what does it mean for this thing to be a Cauchy sequence. So we will say Xn is a Cauchy, that's our word, or a Cauchy sequence, um, if, let's say, given some positive number epsilon, so for any epsilon, really there's no way to say that, uh, there exist a natural number n, so n and n, such that um, if m and n are both, or maybe I should say it this way, such that for all, for all other, um, these are going to be indices in your sequence, as you could probably imagined. So for all indices larger than this one that we found, say, uh, what should happen? We're going to say that the distance between points in my sequence when the indices are big enough are less than epsilon. Okay, and so what's going on here? Since we're in a metric space, I can try to draw you a picture like in the plane so that it maybe makes sense. And so what's going on here? I've got some sequence xn and what we're saying is is that uh, eventually this is trying to tell me that what's another way to say this i guess how about so given epsilon let's say i've got this point x capital n so what i'm going to do is if i was given some radius ahead of time what's going on there exists a point in my sequence called x capital n such that for every in my list and what list I haven't written you a list yet here I'm thinking about this is a list x1 x2 x3 onward so eventually I find somebody named xn and uh, we're saying that uh, for every point in my sequence with a larger index than that all this Cauchy thing says is that every single one of those falls in this epsilon ball around xn so again it's trying to say that eventually the points in your sequence should be getting closer and closer together since this should work for every epsilon you could think about how um, if epsilon can get smaller and smaller and smaller and you can always do this you're always guaranteed to find some index n corresponding to what other whatever epsilon that you're given um, every single point in your sequence after this guy xn falls in this window and so we've got this idea again like maybe you think about oh well like you know, it seems like they're clustering around some point. You know, if you're given a smaller epsilon, say, say this purple one here, we're saying that, well, eventually, I'll tell you an index where eventually your points in your sequence will all start to cluster in there. So you, that's what I try to, that's what I mean when I say that, uh, you know, these things are trying to cluster around some point in some way. So what's a little bit different about this than like the definition of a, of a convergent sequence earlier? Um, to say that it's Cauchy, it doesn't suggest you know what your sequence converges to but it definitely suggests that like your points in your sequence are getting arbitrarily close together i hope that makes sense when i say it that way and that's one of the big say differences is that uh, maybe trying to show that a sequence is cauchy is sometimes easier to do than to try to show that a limit converges to or, i'm sorry a sequence converges to something where in the Cauchy case, you don't have to worry about what the limit actually is. You don't have to have that on hand to get an idea of what the sequence is doing. On the other hand, if what you were, uh, you know, destined, or that's a goofy way to say it, if what you did want to do is find the limit of a sequence, you know, showing that it's Cauchy might not be too helpful in actually calculating what that limit, what that limit actually is. But maybe to give you an idea, um, give me an easy idea. So for example, let's say X is the real numbers and D is just the usual distance between X, Y, absolute value of X minus Y. Um, in this case, I'll take the sequence XN, let's just say it's one over N is Cauchy. And so why is this thing Cauchy? And you probably did this in like a real analysis class. 
So what we need to do is maybe also for some of these proofs when you're doing these, you kind of work backwards. So what do we want? We want to show um, that there exists n such that for all indices larger than this one, um, that I would like to have one over m minus one over m be less than epsilon. And so what you can say for sure is that, um, well, without loss of generality, um, we could definitely say that one of these two indices is bigger than the other, say. So why don't we say that uh, n is less than or equal to m, which is, let's say, less than n. <clears throat> so uh, what do we want to do? Why does that help me then? Well, in that case, so 1 over n minus 1 over m is, you know, if I'm taking stuff away from from uh, 1 over m, and this should be less than or equal to the absolute value of just 1 over m, which should be less than or equal to the absolute value of just 1 over n. So what do we want to do? I want to make, so I'm trying to kind of outline the thought process you're going through with these proofs, and I want to make this less than epsilon. So if I do that, why don't I just kind of solve that for n? So n would be larger than 1 over epsilon. And now let me show you how the proof would actually go. So you would say, let epsilon be bigger than zero. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to say, if n is a natural number such that um, n is larger than one over epsilon, then what we just showed is you know, the distance between one over n, I mean, I'll say it this way, then uh, for all n m bigger than or equal to n, we have the distance between 1 over n and 1 over m is uh, less than or equal to just 1 over n, which is less than epsilon, according to the work that we did right here. So what did you show me? You showed me that eventually 1 over n minus 1 over m, in other words, the distance between two points in my sequence becomes arbitrarily small. So that means that xn equal 1 over n is Cauchy.